Hello, and welcome to Call of the Runes. Today we're going to talk about Evas, the fifth rune of the second Ayat. This represents the letter Y, and its literal meaning is the U3. We're now at the middle point of the runic alphabet, uh, where Yera is a rune of celebration, uh, Iwas is a rune of Scythe, the more mysterious magic form, which we'll talk about later in this chapter, and introspection. Iwas is a fitting rune at the center point, as it also represents the world tree that connects the nine realms and stands as the center of the universe. And with that, let us begin. First we'll start with the rune poems. The first rune poem is the Norwegian rune poem. You is evergreen, and it will crackle when it burns. The first line is very straightforward. The yew tree is an evergreen, so it stays green even in the heart of winter. One of the kennings for Yggdrasil, the world tree, is Vettergrunsr Vida, evergreen, the exact same wording as is used in this rune poem. Yggdrasil, in some older translations, is often described as an ash tree. However, this is likely a mistranslation because the ash tree is not an evergreen tree. This original confusion probably originates with one of the kennings for the yew tree, uh, Baraskar, meaning the needle ash. Therefore, this rune represents not only a yew, the yew tree in general, but most essentially the central tree in Nordic cosmology, Yggdrasil. The yew tree is also one of the longest living trees in Europe, making it a likely candidate for the eternal Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil's origin is unknown, and in the cyclical nature of Nordic mythology, perhaps it has always been there and it will always be there. Uh, its mighty, mighty branches uh, form the stage of all of Nordic mythology, from the realms of Muspelheim and Niflheim um, in the beginning, all the way into Ragnarok, where the ancient tree is burned, but not destroyed. Yggdrasil's branches reach down into the heavens, and its tree roots plunge into depths unknown, where they drink from sacred wells. All kinds of mythological creatures live in the tree, uh, proper, not alone, not only in the nine realms that are hanging from its branches. The name Yggdrasil translates to Odin's steed, Yg being a one of the names of Odin, and this could have multiple meanings. In a shamanistic context that we've already talked about, uh, the bridge between worlds is often described as a tree reaching into the heavens. It could be that Yggdrasil is Odin's steed because it is then the medium through which he travels the nine realms. That would make a certain amount of sense as the way Odin acquires knowledge is not in a scholarly way, but more of an aesthetic, shamanistic way. Another interpretation might be that Yggdrasil uh, is where Odin claimed the runes. The Havamal describes how Odin hanged himself for nine days and nine nights from Yggdrasil while fasting. Fasting and physical hardship were used in shamanistic rituals to achieve a trance, and in case of Odin, this led to him achieving the runes at the moment that he passed through the next world and then came back with knowledge of that world, which is the magical runes. Second line is straightforward. Uh, the wood of a yew tree burns slowly with a very intense heat because the tree can grow so old and the wood is so dense, but also has a very high resin uh, level in it. So it's good firewood and because of the rich resin, it gives a pleasant smell and it causes uh, a crackling when it is burnt. In Icelandic, the rune poem reads as follows. You is the bent bow and brittle iron and the giant of the arrow. The yew tree is not native to Iceland, so that would mean that it would be imported and mostly in the form of bows. Yew wood and was and is still very popular for making bows because it combines a remarkable strength with excellent elasticity, giving you a strong bow that still can take a lot of power and put that into an arrow. This historical connection between the bow and the yew tree is reinforced mythologically in Grimnismal, 
In this saga, Odin tells us the one of the rare tidbits of lore that we have about Ulr. Ulr is one of the gods, uh, but we know very little about him because he only shows up at little snippets in some other sagas. Uh, so what he exactly was or what he did is not known to us, but what we do know about this god is through kennings and side mentions in other sagas. And we know that he had a skill with the bow and that his domain was Ildalir, the dale of the yew trees. So this archer focused uh, and skiing focused, because that's another thing that Ulr was apparently very good at, uh, God lived in the dale of the yew trees. Older yew trees uh, can grow so heavy that their trunks rip apart. Sometimes that's the end of the tree, but at other times the tree lives on as two separate trees. The fact that such a hard tree can split itself probably earned it its nickname, Brittle Iron. And that is the last line is another canning then for the yew tree and links it to the archery aspect of the yew. Finally, the Anglo-Saxon rune poem. Uh, the yew tree is a, 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 sorry, the yew tree is a tree with a rough bark, hard and fast in the earth, supported by its roots, a guardian of flame and a joy upon the estate. The yew tree's uh, bark is very is a very distinct pattern, but not necessarily not necessarily rougher than the average tree. The first line may then be interpreted as more along the lines of don't judge a book by its cover, as the bark does not always show the tree's many uses. The second line is fitting for Yggdrasil uh, and also for other yew trees because uh, they can grow hundreds of years old and produce strong and resilient wood. The positive burning qualities from the last line have already been covered. The joy on the estate has to do with the magical qualities ascribed to the yew tree. Uh, Germany still has a saying, vor den Eiben kann keine Sauber bleiben, or no magic can last in front of the yew tree. Uh, this saying paints uh, the tree as a very potent counter charm. And uh, we can also see that in some historical charms and amulets made from this wood. Um, so, the hue tree was a amulet against evil and each region has its own charms and superstitions to ward of evil what traditions were used to keep evil at bay where you grew up let me know in the comments in terms of amulets concerning this rune uh, we can see a small uh, wooden charm found in the dutch town of brissum uh, in the province of frisia the charm has been found uh, dating from around the end of the 4th century uh, and it is amulet RNL11. Uh, this it is inscribed with a mix of different style of runes and Latin in an uncommon dialect and because of this translations are very difficult. This gives us very uh, interpretations varying from always carry this you strength is uh, contained in it to this you, you bring about numbness go away. A second charm, also found in the Netherlands, uh, this time in uh, Western Den, uh, which suffers from the same problems. Several runes are unique and might or might not be bind runes. This is object RNL13. A likely interpretation is, luck stays at home and at the you may it grow on the hill. Huimont has this. Because of the limited amount of data, we might never be able to translate these inscriptions fully. However, a good takeaway from these charms is that this tree was important as a protective symbol uh, around the household. Culturally, it is a potent symbol of life, death, and by extensions, shamanistic uh, powers. Those who are its guardians, its gatekeepers, and its diplomats uh, in that realm between life and death. The tree is often found on graveyards throughout Northern Europe. Uh, and some of these trees are well over a thousand years old, uh, outdating the Christian churches sitting next to them. And when Christianity spreads to Europe, it often assimilated the holy places and the customs of the pagans. And this is also true for the yew tree. 
The relation to death is easy to explain. The tree is a symbol of protection against evil, and because of that, it would be planted in a graveyard to stop evil spirits, such as uh, Drugar and uh, necromancers. And it is also a deadly poisonous tree. The seed and the needle contain a poison that can quickly kill a fully grown man, grown man if ingested. Today, the poison is used in a diluted, for, a diluted form as a basis of chemotherapy. It's not hard to see how the most poisonous tree in Europe is connected to death. The yew tree was not only planted on graveyards to symbolize death, but also to symbolize eternity. It is an incredibly long-lived and resilient to all kinds of weather conditions, and because of this, it was considered a symbol for eternity. According to Dr. Kuko Waka, a German uh, medical professor at the University of Greis, on sweltering days, the melting resin of the tree releases enough poison into the air that if you sit directly underneath them, uh, you could have uh, hallucinogenic effects. Uh, this might be one of the explanations as to why the tree is connected with traveling between worlds and aesthetic knowledge. In a conclusion, Ewas represents the world tree, Yggdrasil, and all associations that come with that. In contrast to the monotheistic religions, uh, where the central conflict is between good and evil, Norse mythology can be seen as a struggle between order and chaos. Ewas is a symbol of that creative order, as the thing that holds the universe together and the structure within all things play out. And the one thing that endures from before creation until after Ragnarok. Ayahuas, as the world tree, gives a powerful message of connection between opposites. Depending on the question asked, that can be finding common ground with an enemy, finding a solution for an impossible problem from an unseen angle, or gaining a new perspective. Combined with Anzis, Odin's rune, this rune hints at a sacrifice that has to be paid for this glimpse into the new perspective, like Odin hanging from Yggdrasil. In combination with Ewas, the horse rune, it talks about journeying the nine realms, and if combined with Yera, the year rune, it symbolizes the cycle of light, life and death that is seen in both of these runes. That brings us to the conclusion of uh, the episode about Yera. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to know more, everything I just told and much, much more, you can find back in Call of the Runes, available on Amazon. A link is down in the description. Uh, and I hope to see you next week. Until then. <laughs>